Today, I'm excited to be here with Mark Silver. Um, some of you may have heard of Mark. If not, you should definitely know about Mark Silver and the Heart of Business, which is uh, the name of his um, company. Uh, first, I want to say hi to you, Mark. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here and doing <laughs> Yay. this. Yay! Thank you, yeah. George. I'm delighted to be here with you. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I love interviewing Mark because uh, there are few people I interview who actually have all this grounded experience in entrepreneurship and in helping thousands of people um, in building their businesses and doing it with infusing spirit, uh, spirituality into how they do it. Uh, so, Mark, you have been in business, you know, and doing this, helping people create uh, businesses since, I think, 1999. Is that right? Yes. So, yes. 20 years. And you, you've been, I mean, I heard about you well before I, we actually met. Uh, great things uh, about what you've done. And um, you have, you know, many of the people that I've worked with have, uh, had their foundation uh, in their business being helped by you and your and your programs. So I'm just really grateful that um, that you are kind of leading the way in our industry in bringing spirituality into business. And um, the spirituality you bring is is not is also I feel very grounded. It, it's not. I mean, you know, it, it's not in some of the general terms, but you actually have a bot. You have to have a framework that you bring. Uh, to your spirituality and um, at, well, it's grounded in ancient wisdom uh, and also your business um, framework and knowledge is also grounded in the experience of many, many entrepreneurs having been through your programs. So um, thank you for doing this interview. And uh, I guess I want to ask you, I mean, there's so many things I could ask you, but one of the things that you have seen over the years, um, while well, you've seen many kind of business strategies come and go and ways of helping entrepreneurs and everyone watching this, most, most everyone watching this is um, either building a business or wants to build a business. You've seen so many strategies come and go. Um, have you noticed any patterns? I guess that's a really <laughs> big question, but, yeah. but you know, yeah, kind of starting to pick your brain here and like, tell us what you've learned in 20 years. You know, like, <laughs> yes. like, what are the patterns? Like what, what doesn't, yeah. what, what doesn't really work for people and what mm -hmm. works better. Uh, let's yeah. kind of start the conversation there. Yeah, I think it's a, I mean, thank you. And thank you. There's, um, hmm, I think, you know, there, there are a number of things <laughs> that don't work. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of what doesn't work boils down to um, people trying to move too quickly. Oh. and trying to fit things too much into a box. Mm. Um, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of business programs come and go. I've, you know, taught my share of business programs, obviously. You know, and one of the conclusions that I've come to um, is that it's really hard, it's, if, if not impossible, to develop a business within a course. You know, um, and, uh, you know, and I, I don't, I'm not obviously against education. We're in the business, you know, we're in the business of business education, as are you. And it's really, really important to learn. But what I've seen over the years, and we've taught them, I've taught them myself, you know, in the past, is that there's these six month or one year business building programs that say, we'll take you from, you know, from the beginning to the I've rarely seen people get results out of that. And when we have seen people get results, they usually um, are not results that can be repeated. They usually end up feeling squeezed, used up, you know, their adrenals burnt out and starting back at zero at the end. And it's, um, and there's, you know, there's six specific reasons for that that I've kind of looked at, but it's like this, this hope that, you can in six months or a year go from, oh, I want to start a business or, oh, I have this brand new business to, look, I'm in complete momentum and things are going really well and it's dependable and everything's working well. It's just not, it's not realistic. It's not um, compassionate towards yourself to believe that. And it's not um, honest 
to sell um, especially high priced programs that promise that because it just doesn't happen that way. I am in agreement with you. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I say that because I have, uh, you know, been in such programs myself uh, in the early days. And then I have worked with business partners who have sold such programs. And of course I have sold such programs before <laughs> like $2,000, uh, you know, go from nothing, no, no idea, no, no idea what you're supposed to do supposedly to, Oh my gosh, you know, you're doing so well and full-time income and all that stuff. And like I said, six months, nine months, 12 months, whatever it may be. So why, why is it? Because I know, you know, the, 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 when we are recording this during the beginning of a year, right. but this is really evergreen information. You can, <laughs> you, you'll find launches of this stuff beginning of the year, sometimes middle of the year, definitely during the fall, you know, at the end of the year sometimes. So yeah. whenever you're watching this people, you're going to be getting emails from different sources or Facebook posts or whatever, selling you uh, uh, an A to Z uh, business building program course that's supposed to help you solve all the problems and forevermore, you know. Um, right. So why? Why isn't it? Why isn't it? And, and, and by the way, I should, I should I'm, I'm really, as we talk about this, I also am really curious uh, what elements, um, uh, you know, differentiate your programs with, mm -hmm. with that kind of thing. And then the right. elements about my program might be, but yeah. So, so why don't you, yeah. why does that work? Yeah. And I, you know, and I do, and I think it is important at the beginning, at the outset to kind of differentiate like the courses that you teach. I mean, I, I mean, we have clients in our programs or clients that are in our community that are like, you know, they're constantly raving about your work, which, you know, rightfully yeah. so. And, um, and it, because what you're doing is you're teaching a specific strategy or a specific skill set, like something that gets added into the mix, which of course, you know, you need to, you know, take those pieces on, you know, in a set piece. It's the, it's these big picture A to Z pieces that are really like where it doesn't work. So there's kind of like six different, you know, cause I really, what like, I was really struggling a while ago kind of thinking about this problem and going like is what like what's what's really going on here and you know why do so few people really see success from these kinds of programs and the first the first piece is um diagnosis really people who come to this come to these programs have many different starting points. They have many different personal histories. They have many different places where their skills are excellent and many places where maybe they have personal story or trauma or, you know, challenges from their past that make certain things difficult, more difficult for them. And, <clears throat> and it, you know, we have a free assessment on our, you know, uh, on our website. And I, you know, I see so many assessments come over and they assess people according to different stages of business development that we've identified. And it's really typical for people that are self-employed to have their business be all over the map. They have a little bit from stage one, a little bit from stage two, a little bit from stage three. And, you know, and, and they have these different pieces and because it's a hodgepodge, it's like, that's how people have collected information. They've collected things um, and implemented according to what's comfortable to them. So when everybody has the same, the same starting point and are going through at a set pace, invariably, there's going to be this, um, some people excelling in some parts, other people getting stuck in certain things and like never moving on, even though the course is moving on. It's like, um, there's, it, you know, and so that's a, so there's just this horrible, horrible problem that you don't have an accurate compassionate way of identifying the start point for each person. They're kind of like need to go through this, you know, set timing and set curriculum. So that's yes. the first piece. Yes. You know? I, I totally agree with that. You know, I, um, I actually do uh, run a sort of a year long mentoring group, but in that group, it's so funny because me members uh, here and there have requested a step-by-step -step, A to Z week one, do this, week two, do this, week three. And I'm like, it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, everybody, there's, if there's 50 members, there's 50 starting points, you know, 
And so I, I, I love how clear you are about this diagnosis. And I have recommended your assessment to a lot of people. Mm, thank so you. Those who are watching this, if you haven't t taken the Heart of Business, uh, it's on the Heart of Business website, the, the assessment. Uh, I'll put the link in the notes of the video. But um, Mark, I just want to make sure people uh, know exactly where to find it. It's heartofbusiness.com. And then yep. is there... It, Mm -hmm. Yeah, go, go to our free stuff page. You can go. Um, okay, so heartofbusiness.com slash free dash stuff. If you go to heartofbusiness.com and then mm -hmm. click on free stuff on the top, you'll yes. see where the assessment is. So take the assessment um, because, of course, it comes with the 20 years of experience of Mark's, you know, diagnosing where people are at. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's, the, that's one reason that's really important for us. Mm -hmm. And by the way, some people watching this are actually designers of business programs and mm -hmm. coaches and, and, and trainers, mentors. So you know, let's, let's make ours better <laughs> given this, given this framework. So diagnosis, right. that's important. All right. Yes. Yeah. So, so there's a second thing is that, and th I think this is, this is just generally true in life is what's missing in these programs is iteration. You know, the first, you know, the first time you do something new, it's crap. <laughs> <laughs> At least for me, um, I, you sometimes know, for most people, we get beginner's luck. Sometimes there is beginner's luck, but most right. of the time, including for myself, it's exactly. not usually the case. Exactly. Like whether you're working on niching or working on marketing right. messaging or you're working yes. on, you know, like a sales conversation or you're working on offer creation, like it's all iteration. Like you do something and yes. you test it and it's like, yeah. did it work? What, how does it need to be tweaked? Does it get better? You know, um, business model, for instance, businesses almost as a rule, um, what is going to make them really successful is a way different business model than they start out with. It's just like things just change over time. You can't leap into a sophisticated business model and you can't get to really like flying business with the business model that you need at the very beginning. All of these different things require iteration and a program that only lasts a year, you know, I say only, um, doesn't have time. It's like, oh, here's the first module. Let's spend a bunch of time doing the first version and the second version and the third version. Let's get to the fourth module and then go back to the first and iterate. And, you know, it's like all these different pieces affect each other. And it's like you, you get to different parts and you need, it, it informs, oh, I need to go shift that first thing I did because I've learned something new here. So there's this organic system wide iteration that needs to happen in a business as you learn and as you grow to make it successful. And it just can't happen in these kinds of A to Z, step one, step two, step three processes. A lot of people have, said, have told me when they've gone through such programs um, that it's that if somehow they have failed because they weren't right. able to follow oh. the formula, right? And there must be them because the formula was sold to them as being foolproof it's the other thing. It's like, oh, absolutely. You, you, can't, you can't lose. You can't not succeed if you follow the step-by-step -step formula. And if you don't succeed, well, then it must be you. You didn't follow the formula correctly. By and the way, the if time. anybody ever says that, it's always a lie. It's mm -hmm. never true. It's never yeah. true. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you spoke that. It's so important because the third part of this, the third piece is what I was referring to as time. Like I, over 20 years, watching thousands of people build businesses, what I have concluded is that the fastest that people will go from kind of zero, excuse me, zero to momentum is maybe 18 months to two years, but much more commonly, three, four, five years to really, because of this iterative nature, you do something, you test it, it takes time to put it in place and to work it out and see how it's working and then you go back and fix it and then you put something else in place and it's, you've got to have the spaciousness to do that. And so what happens in these six month, nine month, one year programs is that just at the point where you're kind of maybe implemented 20% of what's been talked about over the year. And you're just kind of wondering, God, do I need to go? You're, you're done. You're out. And you haven't implemented near enough of it to really see the kind of results that you'd want to see. And there's no, there's, there's, 
anyway, all of these, all of these pieces are missing. Yeah. It's so painful. Wait, so the six, I should stop selling my six figures in six months program. No, but it really is. There's, there's so many people who, you know, email me and says, George, is this, is this legit? I'm like, well, let me look at the timeline they're suggesting here. Oh no, it's not legit. You know, but, but I love, thank you for, I'm so glad we've got this, you know, on, on record, you know, somebody with, with your experience and I totally agree based on my, what I've seen is that it doesn't happen for people in the timeline that's promised by most marketing gurus and business gurus. Um, now, the question, of course, is how do we deal with the disappointment or the, or the, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's sort of like, well, then if those things aren't true, what should I do? Because I have to make money yesterday or, know, you know, I have to make I money. Like, is it possible? Is it possible to, to eke out a livelihood yeah. or do I need to get a job and then, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I, that's, a, I mean, it's a great. It's a great point. So first of all, it's not like you struggle with zero results and then suddenly at the four year mark, you get all your results. You get, you know, it's like if you're implementing um, effective business strategies and going through it and, you know, like really doing the work, you should see results along the way. And um, it can be disappointing. I'll tell you the by far the largest type, the, the most common response I get from people when I give them this timing is actually kind of a compassionate relief because they realize that it's not personal to them. Like they're not personally failing. And when you know realistically what the timeline is, you don't make decisions that are um, financially um, uh, really painful and you know, like uh, self-sabotaging, like you don't, you know, suddenly quit your job and expect to replace the income in a few months. You know, it's like, oh, you know, keep your job, uh, work part-time at your business, you know, get the basics, the very basic first stage element elements in place until you start to get a little bit of traction. You know, it's like when I talk about, transitioning from you know having a job or having another form of support to letting your business i you want to identify your squeak by number and the squeak by number is not your ideal income it's not the income where you're fully you know um funding your retirement and you know you've got your savings accounts full it's like what's the minimal amount you need to keep the lights on and food on the table and take care of your basic needs so that you can go full time in your business and then really have the time and space to um, uh, help accelerate the pieces that you already know are working because you're already at your squeak by number. And that's the transition that I like to see people go through. And it's so, such a more successful thing because somebody who's got a squeak by number of, you know, you know, ideally they'd like to be at five or eight thousand dollars a month, you know, because of family and other things. But they, but their squeak by numbers maybe thirty five hundred, and they can get their business part time to like two thousand twenty five hundred, you know. And then they realize, oh, if I do this, this, and this, if I just had space for more clients, oh, I've got like it's working. I can jump to thirty five hundred like this. I can leave my job, and then I know what I'm doing enough to be able to move it into more sustainable place. That's, that's how I like to see people work that transition. I love that. Thank you. Yes. And I agree with you. It is a relief to know that, okay, it's not somehow there's something wrong with me, but I am on the trajectory. I am, you know, actually uh, learning what I need to learn and growing the kind of um, sort of uh, internal skills, you know, mindset and emotion kind of skills to 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 build a successful business long term so thank you for that yeah 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 i mean so the other piece that's often missing from these programs is the right kind of support you know I'm, i've identified kind of three different kinds of support there's expert support where somebody who knows something about 
something that you don't know about can tell you, you know, like George, you have amazing information about what's currently working with Facebook ads, for instance, or, you know, about live webinars or these pieces, like you've got these pieces of information that are just gold. And, you know, you just, sometimes you just got to learn skills and you learn how to do things. And um, you need to learn those pieces. You know, we need that kind of support. Um, another kind of support is peer support. A lot of people who are self-employed don't have other people who are self-employed to who really know what it's like to go through that. And so they get a lot of messages from other folks, you know, from other people in their life going, oh my God, you're going to fail or you're going to starve or everything's going to fall apart or how can you possibly do that? And that, that can be really um, undermining. And there's also um, an aspect of spiritual support where we need to be able to have a consistent connection to confidence, to love, to service, to something larger than ourselves, to our deeper values, to that, um, that deep place inside us that fills us up and keeps us moving and um, helps to guide us and helps us to make um, difficult decisions to the to face um, the challenging parts of business because there are challenging parts to business right um, you don't want to push through um, but you don't want to stay frozen there needs to be a way to heal and move forward the combination of expert support and peer support and spiritual support is where we I see people really gaining traction you know um, peer support alone, people can spin because they don't know what they're doing. Expert support alone and some of the things that we've talked about, you know, about feeling like a failure because, oh my God, I haven't implemented what this person who's been doing it for 20 years or 10 years or whatever, they're so good at it. And when I do it, I, I, you know, it doesn't work. It's like, that can feel really hard. You bring these three types of support together and it's rare to see those three kinds of support, um, you know, um, what's the word, uh, you know, effectively, skillfully woven together in these programs, mainly because one type of support or another tends to, tends to predominate, you know, and it's usually in these year-long programs or six-month programs, it's the expert kind of support, like do this no matter what. If you don't do it, you're not committed enough. Um, you know, where's your, you know, where's your willingness to show up for this? And um, a lot of these other pieces are missing. Yes, yes, I agree. And sometimes there are programs that have peer uh, support and expert it's support, but, but the spiritual part is still very lacking. It's still I love the way you talk about it, sort of love and trust. And it's like, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I am with you on this because, because, you know, if, if it's just, if it's just about building business or otherwise you will starve and then miss out on life. <laughs> it's very, right. it's very scary and it's intimidating. And, but right. wait, but what if, what if there was a ground of, um, you know, security that we could really, believe in and trust in. So, um, Mark, you have a learning community and you I have do. created based on having seen what hasn't worked and of right. course experimented with, with many things yourself and mm -hmm. seen peers experiment. You've created um, a program that, or a community that kind of weaves together these three parts. Well, I, I, I expert I spiritual. I did, I did, because I'm like, okay, so how can I, I was like really stumped for a, a while, kind of just really thinking through, like, how can we give people the information that they need, the support that they need, and the container that they need so that they can move through this? Yes, there needs to be some systematic way. Yes, there does need to be some kind of a a, a roadmap in terms of what's needed, but that they can do it in a way that really fits their own pacing, their own learning style, their own needs around life. Because the, I mean, the other two pieces that I just want to mention quickly have to do with compassionate accountability that take into account that, um, 
you know, sometimes we have things going on in our life and the business is not the first priority, or sometimes we miss following through with something because something else is going on. And uh, that really deserves to be attended to. Like this week, Mark, our kids came home from school with lice. And I'll tell you all of my, you know, and this is a normal, you know, it's like when you have kids is what happens. It's not a huge deal, but it does mean that for two days, our lives were turned upside down and all of the I did the bare minimum to show up for clients and things like that, but all of the proactive projects I was working on were like out the window and my productivity goals for this week are kind of out the <laughs> my little wow. guide yeah. sheet, you know, it's like kind yeah, of out yeah. the window. This is life. There needs to be space for that in whatever container you're, you're you know, it's going for your business. And so, and the, and the last piece has to do with unethical or unethical, what I call unethical pricing when people are in early stages of business development and it, your business is not going to grow that quickly, if you pay a lot for something and it ends up creating a debt and it's not a reasonable expectation for the business to be able to pay that back for two or three years or four years, that can create a burden that increases the, the pressure to be successful that then undermines the ability to be successful. So when I was kind of dreaming this up, I was thinking, okay, so it's going to be some kind of a membership community. You know, we've seen membership communities and it, can we have compassion and accountability? Can we have the learn modules? Can we have the assessment so that people can um, identify where they are and what they actually need and do it at their own pace? Can we have the spiritual support? You know, we do virtual retreats every other month, 24 hours. We have regular um, spiritual guidance and support and meditation and and uh, in that way we have um, coaching and feedback we have all of this and then we created it I created it at a pay from the heart pricing like people get to pick how much they're paying a month so that they you know with the mind that oh yeah I'm going to need to sustain this probably over 18 months or two years or three years like while I'm building my business you know, what is sustainable so that if I have a month where I'm sick or I have a month because my kid's getting married or I have a month where what, you know, whatever, that I can still stay on track, but I can, but I'm not going to be as productive or as engaged during this time. And, um, and so that's, that's what I really did was had this thought about like, how can we do it so that the rug doesn't get pulled out on them after six months or 12 months and only 20% has been implemented and where there's the time and space. I just was talking to somebody today on a coaching call. They said, oh yeah, I went through the learning modules in the community and um, I'm not yet getting those results I'm needing. I'm going to go back through, right? The iteration. I'm going to go back and like tweak and refine and make it better. And, you know, and this is a totally natural and normal part of the process, but she has access to that because of the structure that I, I really wanted to put in place for that. That is awesome. I love that you put a pay from the heart price around it. And I agree with you about the ethical pricing. I, you know, you and I probably have, have had clients come to us after they've already spent thousands, if not sometimes tens of thousands of dollars I know. on things. And yeah. it's always like, Oh my gosh, I wish, but, but sometimes I, I think, you know, maybe they had to, because it's like, it's like they were so intrigued by that kind of marketing copy and that, that kind of possibility. You know, I, I don't think so. You know, it's like, so marketing and marketing and advertising got its official start, like in a big way, just as the field of psychology was growing right? Um, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, um, you know, Madison Avenue and the, you know, the marketing, the big first marketing, you know, it's like all took it out of the psychologically manipulative tactics taken straight from the infancy of psychology. And so p if people are intrigued by that, it's not a natural organic intrigue. It's, um, it's a manipulated um, uh, hype, um, unethical sales process. There's no way, I think, that someone who is really grounded, who really has the space and time to consider, who can 
who can consult with people they trust and look at something honestly, have a brand new business and say, okay, I'm going to spend 10 or $15,000 on this program, you know, but I'm going to put it all on my credit card or I'm going to spend the last of my savings or it's just, it's like there's there. I'm not saying there's not a space for higher price, more premium programs, but those are for, you know, advanced, sophisticated businesses that have the wherewithal to pay for them. And they're getting the kind of support and training um, that's needed at the level that their yeah. business is at. I, sometimes I see testimonials about, oh, this program, you know, uh, allowed me to add another six figures or make six figures. And then what we don't know behind the scenes is that that business was already at a, such a level where they needed just a few tweaks to add... Right you know, add a 10 to 20% to their income. And that was got them to six figures or whatever it may be. It's like, we right. don't know the story. It sounds like they were coming from nothing and suddenly they made, you know, so right. yes, thank you for, um, you know, kind of helping to get this message out there too. <laughs> yeah. yeah Cause I've, I've been ranting about this for, for years. Right. Um, so Mark, uh, if people, you know, I hope those who are watching this are interested and what Mark has been talking about, go take the assessment if you haven't already done so. It's on heartofbusiness.com. Go there, heart of business, heart as in, you know, H E A R T, heart of O F business, heart of business.com. Go there, click on free stuff, and you'll see the assessment. The learning community is something. Um, when can people join? Is it uh, something that happens once a year? What's the. Yeah, yeah. We, that's an excellent question. You know, we chose, I chose not to leave the learning community open all the time because we have a really precious culture inside the, the where one of generosity and of safety and of courage. And so rather than having it open all the time, we open it generally twice a year. Um, when it's kind of, you know, if you're, I mean, you, who knows when you're listening to this, um, but it, one of the periods is coming up soon. You can also get on the wait list by just, if you go to heartofbusiness.com slash community, that will describe what's in the community and to see if it resonates for you and um, see if it's right. And um, and then if it's not open, you can join the wait list and um, take a look. And we will, we do occasionally let people in from the wait list because sometimes people complete you know, people, I mean, people complete and leave the community from time to time. And sometimes enough space will open up that we'll say, okay, we're between enrollments, but we'll let a few people in because, you know, we want folks in. And um, so that's an option. So that's an option. But it's, you know, it's, um, you're going to want to make sure that you resonate with how we do business. So I would just recommend just you know, either getting on our email list or just taking a good look around our website, looking at some of our free content and making sure that the way we do things resonates with you, you know, and you can always ask a question of us, I'm, of me or, you know, I, I'm always happy to, to respond. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I have known people and I still know people who are in your community and I always hear great things about it. So um, if those be interested, Go check it out, heartofbusiness.com slash community. Um, it describes very well what the community is like there. Um, it's a beautiful, beautifully put together page, by the way. Um, so yeah, go check it out. And um, Mark, thank you so much for the work that you do. I'm delighted. I'm delighted that you invited me here. Thank you so much, George. I always like spending time with you. Yeah, absolutely. Same here. So go check it out, everyone, heartofbusiness.com. Um, lots of lots of content, free content there. And Mark has also had the heart of business. The Facebook page is also quite active. So I'll put all the links in there. So I hope you all check it out. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching.